All right, so let's begin here. Remember, these are the properties that you guys learned from beginning algebra. And this is where you have, um, this time we're going to have rational exponents, meaning your exponentials are going to have powers, also known as exponents, that are fractions. So we're just going to use these properties to simplify. So we have x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. Okay, so if we remember here that when we multiply exponentials with the same base and they have different or possibly the same powers, right, you keep the base and you do what? You add your powers. So in this case, you're going to have x to the 1 half plus 1 half. And so you're going to have to do some addition here with your fractions. So if you guys recall, you know, doing that work, these fractions are like, meaning they have the same denominator, and that's good. This is how we add fractions that are like, right? We keep the uh, denominator of 2, and you add the numerators. So 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get 2 over 2. This is better known as 1. Okay, so my new power here is going to be what? 1. And so we'll write our answer. This is x to the first power, but this also means the answer is what? x, because any, if you go back, any base to the first power is always itself. Okay, so let's note that. Here's the base, and that's what we're talking about. So this answer is just x. Okay. All right. So now here for question three, if we try question three out, you got x to the one-fourth times x to the minus one-fourth power. Okay, so let's look at these powers here. Again, what do we do when they have the same base and we're multiplying here? See this multiplication? Okay. We're going to keep the base. And what do you guys do to the powers? Yep, you're going to take one-fourth, negative one-fourth. We're going to add those powers. So you got one-fourth plus a negative one-fourth. In case you guys, let's get that there. Okay, so we added the powers like we did before here. Okay, but you know with this arithmetic, here's one-fourth plus negative one-fourth. This arithmetic becomes really one-fourth minus one-fourth. And what's that going to be? You could say it's 1 minus 1 over 4. That's 0 over 4. This is just 0. So now my power here, this is the power, will be 0. And this is now x to the 0 power. And what's x to the 0? One. That's 1. So we're using this property over here. right? Any base to the 0 power is the value 1. So OK. So if you go now to number 5, we have x to the 1 half times x to the 1 third. Again, we have two exponentials with the same base. We're multiplying. <clears throat> what do you do with those powers of 1 half and 1 third? Yep. We keep the base, and you add your powers, 1 half plus 1 third. So you're going to do this arithmetic here. So when you do your work now, you might notice 1 half plus 1 third here, <clears throat> your fractions are not like. So we can only add like fractions. Um, and again, this is intermediate algebra. So you guys remember, we need the LCM of 2 and 3. And the LCM of 2 and 3 is 6. So we're going to need a number multiplied to the, to the denominator here of 2 to get 6, and it'll be 3. So I do the same to the top number. And for the next fraction, we know 2 times 3 is 6, and I have to multiply the top as well by 2. So we're going to end up with 3 and 2 because we're going to multiply these two numbers. Is that right? Yes. And now they're like. 
And so you end up with here 3 plus 2 over 6, better known as really just 5, 6. So your base here is going to be x to the 5, 6 power, and we are done. Now, if we go back and look at the worksheet, I want to, I want to say a couple of things about this here. Um, let's note, the power here is positive. You have positive powers, positive exponents. So if they say, write with positive exponents, we have done just that. So in a sense, we're done. So let's actually use the definition from yesterday. Let's recall, right, or the other day, that we can write these exponentials with rational exponents, we can write them as radicals, right? So I want to try to write some of these things here as radicals, just because we can. And this will be review here of writing this as a radical. So uh, the other day, yesterday, whenever that was, we remembered that x to the n over m can be written as Okay, remember how we did this here? We have uh, this denominator here of a 6, or we should say this denominator here of a what? Of an m. So this will be the mth root. So we can write this as the mth root of x to the what? To the nth power. Where my numerator here is n, and it's still n. So that was one definition of a, an exponential, or say, an, yeah, an exponential with a rational fraction power we can write as a radical. And we may want to do that because what that does for us here is it can tell us when we have a reduced what? Radical. So my index is 6. This is x to the fifth power. And if you guys recall, because the index, here's the index is actually bigger than my what? My power. That means this radical is simplified. So that's a good thing to know. So we're, I'm going to do that as well for all these questions, is I'm going to actually write them as um, in both positive exponents and write this also as a uh, radical. So we get used to using that definition. And this is an index value. Okay, so make sure it's kind of it's not a six times that radical, it's, it's in this little space there, okay? So, okay, so we're gonna be, we're gonna do something that's really complete here. Number seven, when we use these properties, we get x to the minus one half times x to the two thirds. Now, again, what we do is we simply add our powers and keep our base, right? Because we're still using that property, that first property. Multiplication of exponentials with the same base, you add the powers here, and that's what we're doing. We're going to keep the base, we're going to add the powers. So all of our work now, negative one-half plus two-thirds. Now, this depends on how well we can add fractions again, right? So I'm going to take, I'm going to remind you guys, the LCM here is six, so I'm going to take kind of a shortcut, since you guys are in intermediate algebra, Remember, we had to multiply this bottom number by 3, we do it to the top. This bottom fraction by 2, the top is 2, because the LCM is what number? 6. six. So we get negative 3, 6 plus 4, 6. And that'll be negative 3 plus 4, everything over 6. And you're right, it's 1, 6. So this here is my new power. So your final answer is x to the 1, 6. Now, is that 1, 6 positive? So if they say write with a positive power, you are, you are done. But if they want us to write as a radical, this is the 6 root of x. So there's both answers. And this is number what? 7. So number 9 x to the 3 fourths times x to the 1 third. Again, we simply add our what? Powers here. Okay, because we're multiplying, you add these powers. 
So here's the work. Three fourths plus one third. And again, the LCM of four and three is 12, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to multiply the first fraction here by three and the second fraction by, by four. So remember, when you multiply across now, this way, we get 9 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. And what does that equal? Right, 9 plus 4 over 12 will give you 13 over 12. This is my new power here. So your final answer here, if we go back, will be x to the 13 twelfths. We know the power is positive, so we're done. However, when we write this with radical, as a radical notation here, this will become the twelfth root of x to the 13th power here. Now that's the twelfth root. So if we remember the definition, right, your index of 12 has to be larger than the power inside for your variable. And so here's the issue. This radical, we'll put it in red. Needs to be, yep, simplified. Let's kind of write that a little better. So your radical needs to be simplified here. So let's go back to what we mentioned here. There's a nice, quick, and easy way we can do this, right? Because we don't, we don't want to go home and add in our refrigerator perfect twelfths, OK? Because that's a lot of, um, you got to have two or three refrigerators now, right? It's a lot of information. So let's remember here, how do we do this? So let's write this down. I want, I want to note that the power here is 13 twelfths, right? Do you guys remember what we did? What do you do in this situation? Right? I showed you a way we can do this. Yeah, you write your improper fraction, numerator bigger than the denominator. You write this as a what? Mixed number. Mixed number, right. Where this is my quotient, remainder. This is my doing my dividing. So if we go back to the days where we did simple division like this, right? 12 goes into 13 once, that's the quotient. Now 1 times 12 is 12. Subtract, I get a remainder of what? 1. one. And this is 12, we're dividing by 12 here. One. Yeah, so it's 1 and, let's draw that 1 nicer. Well, it's 1 and 1 twelfth. All right, you guys okay with that? But a mixed number again, this Q, RD, because you have a whole part, a whole number, and a fractional part, that mixed number is really written as Q plus what? R over D. I guess we can write it over here. So that's written as Q plus R over D. That's really a whole portion plus a fractional portion. So this answer that we got here, we can really also say that 13 twelfths is really 1 plus 1 twelfth. Remember we said 13 twelfths over here was our answer. Is that right? <coughs> so if we write this as 1 plus 1 twelfth, we're now going to use some properties. We're going to replace this power over here with 1 plus 1 twelfth. Yeah. So here's what that looks like. x to the 1 plus 1 twelfth, and then go back to your property way over here. Okay, we're going to use this property 1 again. So if you notice, I'm adding two numbers together, right, in the power position, exponents. I can separate them. So this means, let's go all the way down here that we can write this as x to the first power times x to the 1 over 12th power. You see, 
You guys okay with that? Yes. Yeah, remember that part? This is, the, this is that power again. 1 plus 1 twelfth here. Here's a 1. Here's a 1 twelfth. And what that does for you is you now have x times the twelfth root of x to the first power, which is just x. Mm -hmm. And what you can actually notice now is that the index of 12 is actually bigger than your what? Doesn't mean than the, the, the power for the variable. 12 is bigger than 1. So this means that your radical is what? Simplified. Simplified. So here's another way we can simplify our answer. And we may want to get used to doing that as well. So I'm going to do that for all of these. We're just going to really convert our what? Our improper fractions to mixed numbers and use our property again. And that's your answer. And that was number what? Is that number nine? Okay, number 11. x to the 2 fifths times x to the 2 thirds, right? We know, again, we're just going to do what? We're going to add our powers. Okay, because we're multiplying again. We add the powers, keep the base. So the work here, here's our work. 2 fifths plus 2 thirds. What's the LCM of, of 5 and 3? 15. So, so that means I have to multiply the bottom by 3 to get 15, right? So I have to do that to the top. The bottom by 5, and I do that to the top. And how we multiply here is straight across, meaning horizontal, horizontally across. So we'll get 6 over 15 plus 10 over 15, which is 6 plus 10 over 15. And the answer here is what? 16 over, 15. 16 over 15. So here's my new power again. So if they say write with a positive power, well, we are done. This is the answer. But since the fraction is improper, yeah, we, we write this improper fraction as a mixed number. Quotient plus remainder over that divisor here. What's the quotient when you divide 16 and 15? Or 16 with 15, right? Isn't it 1 again? Yes. What's the remainder? 1. And what did the dividing? 15. Okay, so this becomes, right, this will be our new, this is our new power here. x to the 1 plus 1 over 15, because that's equivalent to the 16 fifteenths. This is, these are the same numbers. By our property, x to the first times x to the 1 over 15, which gives you x times the 15th root of x. There you guys go. Okay, so that was number 11 here. Okay, you guys got that there? So number 13 is x times x to the minus 1 half. If it's just x, what's the power? One. That's 1. So x to the first power plus negative 1 half, right? We add the what powers. So we end up with x to the 1 minus 1 half, because that's the definition of 1 plus a negative 1 half. So we're going to, have to have to, we're going to have to do some work here. So we have 1 minus 1 half. Now that's going to be 1 over 1, because that's a whole number. And again, the LCM here of 1 and 2 is 2. So I'm going to have to multiply the bottom by 2, the top by 2. And you can say, do I have to multiply the bottom and the top by 1? Well, okay, sort of, maybe not. Because it, it's not going to make a difference. The number 2 is the same as 2 times 1. So, okay. So we get 2 over 2 minus 1 half is 2 minus 1 over 2. So this is what? 1 half. Now, is that an improper fraction? Nope. So your final answer is? 
x to the 1 half or the square root of what? x. Positive power answer and radical answer. Okay. All right. So this is number 13. Number 15 x to the 1 fifth times x, and again, that power is going to be what? 1 here, okay? All right, so this is x to the 1 fifth plus that 1. If you remember, we're multiplying exponentials. We add the powers. So with our work, 1 fifth plus 1 over 1, because that's 1. So we need to multiply the bottom by 5 and the top by 5. 1 fifth plus, remember you have to what? Multiply straight across. 5 over 5, which is? Six over five. 1 plus 5 over 5, you're right. 6 over 5. Now that is a what? Improper, Improper fraction. So in some sense, x to the 6 fifths is your answer, because you wrote this with a positive power, but if they want you to write this as a radical, we have to convert 6 fifths to a mixed number, right? A quotient plus a fractional part. So if you divide 6 and 5, what's your quotient? One and, one over five. and the remainder is 1, 5 is the doing the dividing. All right, so this is my new power here. So I'm going to use this as a power here for 6 fifths. So we have x to the 1 plus 1 fifth, which is x to the first power times x to the 1 fifth power, or really x times the fifth root of what? x. Because we're going to use this power here of 1 plus what? 1 fifth. We're going to use the mixed number version and our property again. So we have a simplified radical form here. Okay, so that's actually simplified now. Number 15. Number 17, x to the 3 fourths times x, and then again that's x to the what? First power. So that'll give you x to the 3 fourths plus 1 because when we multiply exponentials with different powers or the same, we simply add the powers, right? So here's our work. 3 fifths plus 1 are really 1 over 1. The LCM of 1 and 4 is 4, so I multiply this by 4, the second fraction, right? Top and bottom. You get 3 fourths plus, oops, I already did the arithmetic, plus what? 4 fourths gives you 3 plus 4 over 4, which is 7 fourths. Is that right? So x to the 7 fourths, that's your answer, written with a positive power. And then you guys know the power is what? It's improper, right? So we have to write it as a mixed number if we want to put it in radical form. So mixed number quotient plus, so bring out your division algorithm, right? Four goes into seven how many times? Once. One times four is four. Subtract, you have three. So you get the quotient, remainder. So yeah, so what is this? One plus three fourths. So seven fourths is one plus three fourths as really a mixed number. So we say x to the first plus 3 fourths, which is x to the first power times x to the 3 fourths. And now we get x to the fourth root of x cubed. Yes, absolutely. Now, remember, this is what you want to do because your index 4 here is going to be bigger than your power for x. What that means is this is actually a simplified radical. So this is what you guys want to do. So if they ask you to write this as a 
as a radical, you just did, that's the process. It's x in the fourth root of x cubed. So that leaves us up to 19 now. So for 19 here, x to the 1 fourth times x to the 1 third times just an x. Now if it's just an x, put the power 1 here, right? Now remember here, you could generalize this, meaning if you're multiplying exponentials and they have different or same powers here, Right? What, did you, what do you do here again? You keep the power. I'm sorry, you keep the base. And then you do what with the powers? You add them. One-fourth plus one-third plus one. So we add these powers. We're going to add these. So when we do our work now, here's the work. One-fourth plus... One third plus one over one. Okay, so what's the LCM here of four, three, and one? It's twelve, so we're gonna have to multiply this first denominator by three, top by three, the bottom by four, top by four, bottom by twelve, top by twelve. And remember when we multiply, we multiply horizontally across. So you end up with 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths plus 12 twelfths. So everything's over 12. 3 plus 4 plus 12, what does that equal? It's 19 over 12? OK, good. So this 19 over 12, right? that's my new power. So this will be x to the 19 twelfths. And if they say write with positive powers, you have. But if they say write as a radical, we're going to have to convert this 19 twelfths to a mixed number, right, by dividing. So what's my quotient going to be here? 1. What's the remainder? 7. And 12 was doing the dividing. So this will be my new power, 1 and 7 twelfths. So your answer here is going to be x to the 1 plus 7 twelfths. Sorry, that's kind of 7. Is that right? And that means I have x times x to the 7 twelfths, which is x times the twelfth root of x to the 7. You guys, you guys okay with the? You guys okay with the arithmetic? You sure? Because you know, there's some people going maybe. How do we get? How do we get this answer? Right. Let's look at the mixed number. This is 12 into what? 19, right? 12 goes into 19 once. One times 12 is 12. Subtract. Remainder seven. So quotient. Q for quotient. Remainder. So that's why you got 1 and 7 twelfths. Okay, you guys okay with that? It's based on arithmetic, not too hard, but as you guys can see, algebra is really processes that ultimately involve arithmetic. 21. Finally. Finally, we get away from our multiplication. So it's 21, that's 1 half. Okay. And what's missing here is what? 1. So when you divide here, you keep the base. What do you do with your fractions? Yeah, let me do this. Let me show you. Here's 1. So we're going to put the number 1. And we subtract. What do we subtract now? Yeah, the 1 half, the second fraction. So we're going to subtract that. So that's 1 minus 1 half. Mm -hmm. So your work will be subtracting now. 
1 minus 1 half. Is that true? So you guys remember way all the way here from the beginning here, the property that looks like we're going to have to illustrate now is going to be here. This is where you have division with different what? Powers, possibly. We keep the base, yes. subtract your powers. So that's what we're working with now. Okay. So here's our work now. Let's go all the way down to, I think it was 21. Here we go. Well, the LCM of 1 and 2 for the denominators is going to be 2, so I'm going to have to multiply the bottom by 2, the top by 2. You get 2 over 2. Yep, and that gives you, yep, you get a nice 1 half here. This is my new power here. It's 1 half. So this, is, this means I have x to the 1 half power, and written as a positive power, you're done, positive exponent, but as a radical, square root of x. So number 23, we have x over x to the minus 2 thirds. And if they don't have a power, that's what? 1. Is that right? So now, let's remember, we keep the base, and we what? Subtract our powers. Now, I want to illustrate something here, because this is where people can get a bit confused sometimes, right? My numerator here is 1. Okay, so I'm going to start with that 1 when I subtract the power. The denominator here is actually a negative fraction, negative 2 thirds. See that negative 2 thirds? Yes. Okay, so I'm really using the property correctly as long as I remember that I have to subtract powers there. So the top power is 1, the bottom is negative 2 thirds. What you really have here is x to the 1 what? plus two-thirds because you have minus a minus here. Minus a minus makes that a what? Positive. Yep. So now when you say, I have to do this work, you might say what? One over one plus what? Two-thirds two -thirds will be, well, the outcome of, of one and what? Three is going to be what? So I have three here, three dip down there. So when we multiply, we'll get 3 over 3 plus 2 thirds, which is, well, 3 plus 2, that's okay, 5 thirds. Here's my new what? Power. Okay, you guys okay with that? Now I'm going to point out something here if you're awake here. This answer, written with a positive exponent, is x to the 5 thirds, because that's what 1 plus 2 thirds is, right? We took the 1, we added it with 2 thirds. Now, you already know if they want us to write this as a what? A radical, then that's going to be, the, yeah, it's going to be here the cube root of what? <coughs> x to the 5th again, and that's not simplified because the index is larger than the power for x. So we have to write this as a mixed number. Is that true? Now, if you're kind of awake, notice this. Isn't that 1 plus 2 thirds? Yes. So the mixed number format here. Right. Quotient plus remainder over that divisor. You already have it here, don't you? Yes. So let's be x times x to the 2 thirds now, because this is a 1. That's 1 plus 2 thirds. Is that true? Yes. So this will be x times the cube root of x squared. Because remember here, you got the index, 3. And this portion up here is your, is under the radical with your variable x. So it's a simplified radical now. So I just want to point out to you guys that I did happen to notice, right, that this is 1 plus, oops, 
plus two thirds. Twenty three. Got a mistake? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what do we do? Okay. It's been a long day. So, what was the mistake? Uh, no, did I not write that okay? One plus two thirds should be three thirds plus two thirds is five thirds, right? And the mixed number, is that going to be, how do we get this mixed number? Three goes into five, right? Goes into once, one times three is three, subtract two. Quotient, remainder, one and two thirds? Okay, we're okay. Okay. Yeah, just want to point out. Okay, I might be, I might be asleep, but I'm not that asleep, right? X three fifths over X to the what power here? First power, right? So, what do we do with the powers? We got three fifths, we got one, what do we do? Subtract, Subtract them. So I just want to be, be careful here with this and remind you, numerator, numerator. Denominator, denominator, right? And then the operation between them is what? Subtraction now. So I have to make sure I do the, the right arithmetic. And my power is going to be now, this is where the work is, 3 fifths minus 1 over 1, which gives you times 5 times 5, which will be 3 fifths minus 5 fifths, 3 minus 5 over 5, which is negative 2 fifths here. So this is an interesting question because now my new power is what? Negative. It's negative. Good. So that's x to the negative two-fifths power. Yeah, and remember here, they're going to say write with a positive what? Power. Write with a positive exponent. And when you do that, we're going to have to use this property again, way, way up here. Oh, here we go. Anytime you have a base to a negative power, what is it? One over, One over that base to a what? Positive power. That's all the way from beginning algebra. And okay, so with us now here, this is 1 over x to the what? Positive 2 fifths power. So if they say right with positive powers, positive exponents, then you are done again. But if they say right as a radical, well, you're going to have to write this as a radical, right? Uh, notice this, 2 fifths is not improper. So this will be 1 over the fifth root of x squared. And we're going to leave it this way. Okay? We don't have to rationalize the denominator here. I won't open up that can of worms. So you're done here with number 25. number 27 here. x to the 3 halves power over x. And if they just have x again, right, what did that mean about your? One. Yep, that's 1. So same base, different powers. x to the 3 halves minus what? 1. Because, be careful here, 3 halves is your first power. 1 is that second power, which you're supposed to always do here, is subtract, right? Whenever you have the division of these exponentials. So the work here now is going to be 3 halves minus 1 over 1. That's your whole number. The LCM is 2, so I have to multiply the second fraction by 2. In question? Oh, you guys can't see that good. I apologize. Okay, 3 halves minus 2 halves is equal to what? One yep, 3 minus 2 over 2. Here's your 1 half. Here's your new power here. 
So this is x to the 1 half or x. square root of x. Twenty-nine x to the three fourths over x to the one half. Okay, remember, you take the three fourths and you subtract the one half. So, just want to be careful here. Three fourths. Here's three fourths. One half. Here's one half. And what do you do now with these? Subtract two powers. So my work's going to be. 3 halves minus 1 half. So my LCM of 4 and 2 is 4. I'm going to have to multiply the second fraction here, both top and bottom, by 2. So remember, you multiply across here. And then we'll end up with 3 fourths minus 2 fourths. Is that true? Double check. Which is 3 minus 2 over 4, which is one-fourth. So my new power here is what? One-fourth. So we get x to the one-fourth power, written with the positive exponents, which is the fourth root of x. 29. They don't multiply the uh, three-fourths by the two? Uh, no, this is subtraction here. See this? So 31, is, it's going to get interesting because we get negative powers here. Negative 1 fourth, x to the negative 1 half. So we get x to the negative 1 fourth. Let's be careful here. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. My first power is what? Negative 1 fourth. So I have to put that down. My second power is negative 1 half. So I'm going to put that down. So let's go back. First power, negative 1 fourth. Second power, negative 1 half. What do you do with, what do you do with this now? What's the operation that goes between these two numbers? Yes. Subtraction. Is that true? Yes. So I want to emphasize this. Right? You're going to have to subtract your powers. Is that right? Now, what you end up with is x to the negative 1 fourth because minus the minus is what? Plus 1 half. So with your work now, it's negative 1 fourth plus 1 half. Now you are, you're still adding fractions. They're assigned fractions. Denominators are 4 and 2. The LCM of 4 and 2 is going to be 4. So we have to multiply, again, the bottom by 2, the top by 2, cross and across, negative 1 fourth plus 2 fourths, which is negative 1 plus 2 over 4, which is positive what? 1 fourth. Here is my new power. So final answer is x to the one fourth, written as a radical, the fourth root of x. Thirty-three, x to the two fifths over x to the negative one third. So be careful when you have your signs. First fraction is two fifths. Second fraction is what? One third. Take a look. Two fifths. Two fifths. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Second fraction. Negative one third. Negative one third. What operation between the two? Yeah. Subtraction. X to the two fifths minus the minus makes that what? Plus one third. So my work now is, I take the fractions 2 fifths plus 1 third. What's the LCM of 5 and 3? Is that 15? So let's see what we do now. 3 down here, 3 up here, right? 
5 over here, 5 over here. Because when I multiply my denominators, what do we get? 15. Is that true? So I multiply again the numerators, and we get 6 over 15 plus 5 over 15, which is what? 11 over 15. So here's our new power here, 11 fifteenths. So this will be x to the 11 fifteenths, written with a positive power, written as a radical, is 15, the 15th root of x to the 11th power. Notice this, this is simplified because, yeah, 15 is bigger than the 11. That's the definition of a simplified radical. So in my mind, when I look at this, yes, I'm using properties. However, what this is really about is really arithmetic with what? Fractions. Okay, so if we go to number 33, or 35, sorry, x to the 4 thirds over x to the 1 half, x to the 4 thirds minus what? 1 half. Let's double check. First fraction, is that right? S second fraction, oops. And then what's the operation? Subtraction? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the work's going to be 4 thirds minus 1 half. The LCM of 3 and 2 is what? 6. Six. Multiply the bottom by 2. Multiply by 3. So if we notice here, 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 is what? Is that 6? So we're going to multiply 2 and 4 and 1 and 3. We get now 8, 6 minus 3, 6, which is 8 minus 3 over 6, better known as what? 5, 6. Here we have our new power. x to the 5, 6 power, written with a positive exponent. Notice the fraction's not improper. So as a radical, that's the sixth root of x to the fifth, and you're done. This is number what? 35. So really, we're doing arithmetic here, because 37 is x to the 3 fourths raised to the what? Second power. So let's remind you guys, what do you do now with this? What property raises a power to a power? Right, you have a single single base, 3, m, or sorry, n and m. So we have x to the n power raised again to the mth power. You keep your base, what do you do with the powers? Do you guys know? What do you do after you, you multiply the powers? Is that right? So that's back from beginning algebra. So notice this, we're using all of these what? All of these properties these beginning algebra properties, just this time the numbers are all going to be what? Fractions. Or I should say not all, but they're going to be arithmetic with fractions, arithmetic with sine fractions. So number 37, some whole numbers. We know this is x to the 3 fourths times what? 2. Because you take that fraction, 3 fourths, and then you multiply it with what? The 2. The operation is between the two, multiplication here. Okay, so here's my work now. We have to also remember what is 3 fourths times the whole number of 2. Well, write 2 as a fraction. 2 over what? 1. So if you guys recall, you multiply how? horizontally across. And so this is going to give you, you can say 6 over 4, but you have to reduce this. You might have seen already that 6 is written as 2 times 3, 4 is 2 times 2, we can cancel. So this reduces really to what? Well, 3 over 2, right? 3 halves, is this is my new power here. 
So the final answer is x to the 3 halves power. And that power is positive. But the power is also improper. And if they want us to write it as a radical, how do we write 3 halves, ladies and gentlemen, here as a mixed number? Right? See that? We're going to have to write this as 1 good plus 1 half. So written as a radical, this becomes x to the first plus 1 half power, which is x to the first times x to the 1 half, or simply x times square root of x. So this is how you write x to the 3 halves as a radical, x times the square root of x. All this arithmetic. So now the property is changed on you. You have now um, x to the 1 third raised to the 6, which is x to the 1 third now what? Times 6, right? 1 third, 1 third. 6 and 6, you're going to have to multiply. So 1 third times 6 over 1 is 6 thirds, which is really what? 2. This is my new power. So we have here x what? Squared. Just because 1 third times 6 is 2. Now, can you write x squared as a radical? The answer is what? No, because it's not a fractional power. Okay, I mean, you could write it as 2 over 1, but... Okay, this is number 39. 41, x to the 3 fifths, raised to the negative 2, which is x to the 3 fifths, times what? Negative 2. So remember here, 3 fifths, 3 fifths times the next frat, the next number is what? Negative 2. It's multiplication. So the work here will be 3 fifths times negative 2 over what? 1. So you have a positive times a negative. What does that give you? It's negative. 3 times 2 over 5 times 1. Is that true? Now these are all primes and nothing cancels. So this is negative. Let's do our multiplication horizontally across. It's negative 6 over what? 5. And here's my answer. So you're going to end up with x to the negative what? 6 fifths, which will be 1 over x to the 6 fifths. We have to write as a positive power. And then if they said, what about a radical? Well, let's note x to the 6 fifths is really x to the what? 1 plus 1 fifth, right? Which is x times x to the 1 fifth, x times the fifth root of what? x. Now, this number here that we just found, or this expression down here, this goes on the bottom here. So if you write this as a radical, this is 1 over x fifth root of x. Okay, so remember that, that these are the two answers that they'll look for. Okay, so we just simplified here. You now have 43 x to the 3 fifths raised to the what? 1 half becomes x to the 3 fifths times 1 half. Okay, remember here, 3 fifths power. There it is, times 1 half, okay, and it's multiplication. So the work here is going to be 3 fifths times 1 half, which is 3 times 1 over 5 times 2, because again, you multiply horizontally across, and we end up with 3, what, tenths. So here is going to be my new power. Are we okay with that? No? Arithmetic is fine? Double check, because remember, I'm not really awake. X to the 3 what? 
tenths. How do we write this as a radical? Tenth root of x cubed. x to the negative 2 fifths raised to the 1 half will be x to the negative 2 fifths times what? 1 half, is that true? Negative 2 fifths is right here. We're going to multiply it with what? 1 half. So let's see what the work becomes. Negative 2 fifths times 1 half here. So I want to remember here that negative times a positive is a what? That's a negative. And then doesn't the twos cancel? Mm -hmm. So we have negative what? One fifth as a power now, or as an answer here. So when I multiply, this is x to the negative what? One fifth. The, the, the instructions say write as a positive what? Power, so that's one over x to the one-fifth, which is really going to be now, yeah, that's your, pos that's your answer with a positive power, but as a radical, that's the fifth root of x. Because we have this down here, it stays down here. Is that true? Okay, so it stays down there, and that's the fifth root. You know, and then make sure this is a nice kind of index here. You know. You guys can see that. Okay. 47. X to the 3 fourths. Raised to the what? 1 6 x to the 3 fourths times 1 6. Is that true? Because mm -hmm. I have my 3 fourths. First fraction multiplied to the second fraction. So when I do the work now, 3 fourths times 1 6. Multiply across 3 times 1, 4 times 6. Remember, we have to simplify these fractions. So at this point, we could use factor trees. Break 4 down as 2 times 2. Break 6 down as 2 <coughs> times 3. So we can see what cancels, and in this case, only what? 3's go away. So we're left with 2 times 2 times 2 on the bottom, and then 1 on top. So this is 1 over 8. x to the 1 eighth as a positive power, or as a radical, the eighth root of what? x. x to the 3 fifths raised to the negative 5 six. We keep the base. We multiply the what? Powers. Let's double check. First fraction, right here, multiplied to the second fraction, right here. So here's our work. This all comes down to just arithmetic with fractions. Positive times a negative is a what? Negative. negative. So that's 3 times 5 over 5 times 6. Oh, the 5's cancel. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So we got negative 3, 6. What is this reduced to? Negative 2. Negative what? It's negative 1 half. Is that right? Okay, you guys okay with this? So we have x to the negative one half. That's not a positive power. One over x to the positive one half, or right, one over square root of x. It's number forty-nine. We finally got to the fifties. x to the fourth raised to the one six. x to the fourth times one six. 
4 power. Here's the 4. What's the other power? 1, 6. Okay, here's your work again. 4 times 1, 6. That's 4 over 1. So that gives you 4 over 6. What is this reduced to? 2 thirds. Here's my new power. So my final answer will be x to the 2 thirds, written with a positive power. As a radical, cube root of what? x squared. OK, so it's arithmetic with what? Fractions. Fractions never leave our lives. This is x to the what? Is that 3 times 1, 6? Here's a 3. The next fraction is 1, 6. So the work will be 3 over 1 times 1 over 6, which is 3, 6, which is also known as what? Is that 1 half? This is our new power. This is equal to x to the what? 1 half or square root of x as a radical. Written as a positive power, written as a radical. Fifty-five. X to the negative two raised to the three halves is x to the negative two times what? Three halves. Here's the negative two power and it gets multiplied to the three halves power. So your work is negative 2 over 1 times 3 over 2, right? So what's a positive times a negative, right? We multiply across here. Isn't that a negative? So it's negative 2 times 3 over 1 times 2. It looks like our 2's cancel. This is negative 3 over 1 or just negative what? 3. Here's our new power. So the final answer is going to be here, x to the negative 3, which is 1 over x cubed. Fifty-seven, x to the fourth power raised to the 3 halves will be x to the fourth times 3 halves, 4, 4, 3 halves, 3 halves, and we multiply. So our work's going to be 4 over 1 times 3 over 2, which is 12 over 2, because we get to multiply straight across, right? And what's 12 divided by 2? Is it 6? That's our new power. x to the 6th power. Last one, x to the fifth to the two-thirds, x to the five times two-thirds. You guys care with that? Five, five. The second power is two-thirds. We multiply. So our work will be five times two over three. Put that over one. How do we multiply fractions? Straight across, meaning horizontal we get 10 what? Over 3. This is our new power. So, x to the 10 thirds written with a positive exponent. And again, if you want to write it as a radical, okay, we have to convert this to a mixed number. right? Quotient plus the fractional part. So I take the 3 goes into 10, three times, three times three is nine, subtract one. So here's my quotient, remainder. So this is actually three and what? One third, which is three plus one third. This will be my new power. X to the three plus one third, X cubed times X to the one third, 
using the property, which is x cubed times the cube root of what? x. So we have the positive power here. We have the radical here.